Welcome to the Spinner Rack with your hosts, Brian and Junior. And welcome back to the Spinner Rack. As always, this is your host, Big B, Brian Adams. Issue 39. This week we're joined by a special co-host, the uncredited voice of Comics Remixed. You hear her every week before you hear us. The beautiful and sexy (laughs) (laughs) mother of my child. Say hello, Melissa Lynn. What's up? And uh, this week in issue 39, we're going to talk about The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Yeah. A film I actually had absolutely no interest in seeing whatsoever. No. But you really wanted to see it? I did. So I was like, all right, I'll see it for you. I wasn't a big fan of the first one. Okay, so what would you think? What did I think? We haven't been allowed to say a word. Yeah, no, we Except haven't. we've said a few words, and your face has said a lot throughout the movie. <laughs> you face-palmed a few times, and it rolled was, your eyes a couple times. It was very hard for you to watch <laughs> some parts. But at the same time, it was this was uh, this is going to be a difficult movie for me to hate. Um, really? Well, there were some actual redeeming qualities in it as a whole. The, uh, the face palming stuff mostly came from, like, <laughs> stupid, stupid, just, like, there was a lot of cheese, you know? Yeah. It was very cheesy. It reminded me almost, like... Isn't Spider-Man cheesy, though? I don't... It's supposed to be. I don't think Spider-Man's supposed to be cheesy. It's, like, sarcastic and... I mean silly. cheesy in the way of kind of, like, um... The Joel Schumacher Batman movies. They are really colorful. The Batman suits had nipples. It was just kind of goofy uh, stuff. You nice. know, um... There was... One line late in the film, Jamie Jamie Foxx's Electro, who I actually didn't completely hate as yeah. much as I was pretty sure I was going to. Yeah. But he said something like, uh, I think it was really the only time I spoke to during the movie. He said... It's my birthday! It's my birthday. I'm going to light my cake. So, and in my head, I thought, oh my god, this this reminds me of like... It's his birthday. Uh, it reminds me of Arnold Schwarzenegger and... Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, like, you know, you, you couldn't take him seriously because it was Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. And he was, you know, it's like, chill and freeze, you know? So it was really kind of... But I heard that line, and I played it as Schwarzenegger in my head. It's my birthday. Would you like my cake? You know? <laughs> <laughs> and it, it brought a whole new hokiness to it for me. I totally saw Avatar Dude for the first little bit that he was on the screen, but then it, it went away. But for a little while, I connected him with Avatar Dude because he was blue. So, oh yeah, we, we forgot to tell everybody that you have absolutely no history, any of the characters really, outside of like the movies, and being in a relationship with me, you haven't really read comic books yourself. You've seen the original Spider-Man movies with Tobey Maguire. Kinda. Kind of. I really don't like Tobey Maguire or Kirsten Dunst, and so it really ruined Spider-Man for me a lot. That's why I liked this, because Kirsten Dunst's character isn't in it. It's right. not her. It's not her at all. And you like Andrew Garfield as spider And what the fuck? What? Uh, no, we'll we'll get to that. Okay. We don't. We don't. We can't pop the chair. This is going to be spoiler filled, by the way, people. Spoiler filled. Okay. So like, I, I felt the pacing of the movie was good. The story wasn't horrible. With all the villains they were going to have in it, Electro, Rhino, the Green Goblin, I thought there was going to be way too much going on. Where the fuck was Rhino? And, uh, I think I yeah, blinked and missed Rhino. Totally. He was in the beginning of the scene, just long enough was to he? get arrested. Yeah. Was he really? Yeah, right in the beginning. Well, no, it started with the parents on the plane. I was so excited to see Paul Giamatti. I love it. And then he was in it, yeah. I the first Spider Man scene with him. I guess I. He was running away. Sneezed and closed my eyes or something. Must have. It wasn't really that long. The little shot is him at the end is the rhino. Paul Giamatti had an easy filming day. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I really thought this movie was going to be like a hot mess of villainy, like Spider Man 3, because they had. In Spider-Man 3, you had the Green Goblin, who was Harry Osborn. You had Sandman, and you had uh, Venom. And it just felt all forced in there really bad. A lot of the fight with Electro and Spider-Man in this movie reminded me of a lot of the fight with the Sandman and Spider-Man in Spider-Man 3. It was cheesy. I, I felt like almost every scene with Spider-Man fighting, it was just too cheesy and too hokey for me to like really appreciate it or think it was cool or awesome. Aww. All the characterizations outside of that I thought were great. I enjoyed seeing how he would save people. It was like he saved people in creative kind of ways and, you know, used his webs to... I liked watching him fight. Oh, I'm not saying I didn't like... <sighs> I guess I am. I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying those scenes I didn't feel like were the best scenes of the movie. Okay. Which is what, coming into this kind of movie, you think are going to be the best scenes. Is the action, the over-the-top fight scenes. And they, they weren't my favorites. I really think, and you know I've told you this before, with Amazing Spider-Man... 
Andrew Garfield's too old for me. I look at him and I, it's hard for me to believe that this is a kid that was in high school just going into college. I just can't see it. Hmm. So I have difficulty with him, like, overall. When I saw him next to Harry, it kind of did point out that he's a lot older Absolutely. than Harry. I thought that. But the relationships between him and Gwen Stacy, I totally, like, the chemistry between them two. was, was It was believable chemistry. Yeah, they were a good pair. I liked his scenes with Sally Field. I actually appreciated it. Sally Field as Aunt May now. I mean, I thought it was cool the first time around, but... But do they have to keep bringing up Uncle Ben and showing her sad face throughout the whole movie? It's kind of fresh in your heart, though. If it's for the thing about the character. Like, if you just saw someone, you still think of people you've just lost recently. I know that. And you have moments. But this is someone you spent your entire life with, so there's a little more, you know. It was a it more was devastating just blow. It was painful for me to see her feeling, like, all lost. Like, you kind of want to see her, like, like she was moving on to nursing and stuff. Show more of that. Like, show her moving on and, and being okay. <laughs> like, stop showing her feeling lost and, like, I don't know what to do without Ben. Because, like, it just makes me feel sad throughout the movie, and it kind of blows. So, how did you feel about that when Harry met Sally? You know? <laughs> when Harry met, met Peter again for the first time, them seeing each other after years. You know, I really have, I really had no idea who he was supposed to be or who he was going to be or what role he was going to play in the movie. So I didn't know that he was going to be such a big character. And I really like the actor. Mm -hmm. He had some really epic scenes where I was like, he's a good actor and I really liked him. What was the question? How did I feel about when they met? Yeah. Well, I I felt like it was kind of like an awkward... It was awkward and then it like, but it was like right back to... It was like they Being were like good. they hadn't seen. And isn't that time. how? But I thought that was kind of. Wasn't that know, how? Is that really how it is? When That's you how it should someone? work when you have a good enough friend. I, it should I, be I like guess. you meet again. It's like nothing. Like no time ever passed. I just felt like hey, there was absolutely no mention of you in the last movie, even though you know we were already. It's just. I, I do think know. it's a bummer that they couldn't like discuss more of the options with the blood thing. It might do something terrible to you, and it might kill you. But like he said, he's dying already. So do you feel like Peter, as Harry's friend, should have come out and just offered up? They should have worked something instead out. Instead of just being like, instead Fuck of just you, being like, no, die. and go figure it out or some shit, you know, because now, obviously, he's fucked up in a different way, and that's, you know... Well, no, it, I think that's from the actual disease that he has. I don't think that's from anything that he's done to himself. I think that's the disease. You know how his father died, and he said it's the Osborne disease, and you always get it around your age? Yeah. And I think that was kind of, like, a way to tie it into the ultimate style of, like, the goblins. Because in the ultimate universe, Norman Osborn doesn't die or anything, but he injects himself with stuff. And he looks more like a goblin versus, like, a dude in a costume okay. who's kind of, like, physically enhanced. I really liked Jamie Foxx's character. Felt like he was sad and lonely. And, and, you know, and that kind of annoyed me at first, because I felt like, Jesus, for... is, is every villain have to be sympathetic, you know? Can't Aww. someone just be a fucking asshole and just, like, be like, oh, yeah, I fucking just want to kill everybody because I'm a dick. Yeah. I miss those villains. They Too many sympathetic villains. Really? Yeah. But I, I, I'm I, really surprised I didn't hate it. How did you feel about it? Being that you liked the first Amazing Spider-Man, you wanted me to, you wanted to see this movie, and that's the only reason I saw it. How much did you like it? Honestly, I liked it better, which is going to go against what a lot of people are saying, so I've seen, like, a lot of hate about this movie. Like, a lot. And I liked it better than the first one. I liked seeing relationships grow. I really liked Harry in the movie a lot. I think that's what made the movie for me, was I thought the actor was awesome. He was in, uh, Chronicle. Which is of like, Narnia? No, no, no. Oh. It's this movie by where these guys find, like, this cave, and they go in there and something happens, and they wake up and they have superpowers. And three I wonder kids. how old he is. Uh, probably not that old. He's probably younger than Andrew Garfield is. Okay. Uh, he could have played Spider-Man, you know, I'm just saying. Someone that age. I've always said, skew young on Spider-Man, skew young. I don't think he could have played Spider-Man. No? No. He's not, like, sarcastic or goofy at all. He's brooding and, like, you know, pissed Well, off. yeah, he was there, but I'm saying that, like, his someone age. his type, his age, okay, would have been a more believable Spider-Man for me. I like him as Spider-Man. You know why I like him as Spider-Man? Because I can see him in that suit, whereas Tobey Maguire, being a sarcastic Spider-Man, it's like, I just, I fucking hate Tobey Maguire. (laughs) He's like whiny to me, and like, he just doesn't fit it. I just don't feel like he fits it. Do you like Tobey Maguire as Spider-Man? Just not Spider-Man for you. You know, he didn't bother me. Uh, You've got to realize, too, though, it's it's been a long time since that first Spider-Man movie. It has. I think, when did that come out? In 2000? I, don't know. Uh, I actually got to see a screening of it three months before it came out, and did you like it at lucky. first? I thought it was great. 
Ew. Like, and but you've got to realize you've never. I'm a comic book fan, and to get something like that, yeah. And I didn't know who Tobey Maguire was either, and I looked like a, past a lot of annoyances. Oh my god, I hate to him like so that much. Movie. I was very. And I hate Kirsten Dunst so much. I was very pleased with it. So this way better to me. Surprisingly, I I did like this movie, but some of it was stupid. The windshield wiper part. I felt like you they did. The, oh my part. god! Yes, I yes yes. Right <laughs> in the beginning, when he's trying to capture Rhino and. He jumps on the windshield of that, that truck and Rhino <laughs> hits the squirters. <laughs> oh, that's like, Rhino in the truck? That, that's Rhino in the truck. That was Paul Giamatti. Okay. Well, see, they didn't give me enough. Like, it, me as somebody who doesn't know anything about it, I still don't know anything about Rhino. Well, yeah, that was him in the end, in the big metal suit. Well, yeah. That you were so disappointed. It's like, where was he? I mean, seriously, for as much noise as they made about Paul Giamatti's going to be Rhino, they he really was like, did. Nothing. They made a lot of but. I, I know you don't like follow this stuff a lot. There is a lot of talk that Sony is planning on doing a Sinister Six movie, which is a group of six of Spider Man's villains that you know. What that's do they kind call of what themselves? they're building the Sinister Six. Oh sorry. Sinister Six. That's what they're building to in this. You can totally see it. Okay. And the end when they showed the big rhino suit before they showed the rhino. Yeah. There were octopus arms that seemed to be sentient because they were moving around by themselves, but I, I think they were kinda like that in the comic books anyway. I think that was more of actually something they did in the original Spider-Man movies, making them kind of have a mind of their own. But they were moving around, and then they had wings, which totally could have been the Vulture, and then they had the Rhinos thing, and I probably missed something else, but eh. yeah. What about the bigs? I, I, I honestly, I avoided all talk about this movie, like all spoilers, anything. I avoided anything to do in the media with this movie until we could watch it and do this right now. And I, I kind of wonder if that saved me on hating it. I knew Gwen might die, so I was waiting for that. Oh, how did you know Gwen might die? I didn't expect her to die. All I kept waiting for, like, the the gasp of life. And then all of a sudden, he's standing at her grave. And I'm like, what? A bunch of BS, dude. What a yeah, bunch no, of BS. That's, that's, that's what happens, man. I, I kind of figured it was coming. What's the point of that? It was in the comic books. Was it? Well, then yeah. he knew, man. Death of Gwen Stacy. Was she, like, off on her way to, Amazing to Spider-Man college in England and all that? I don't know about all that. He shouldn't have webbed that thing on the bridge for her to get out of the cab. He should have just let her go, you know what, she's off to great adventures and, like, stuff that people don't get to do, and just let her go. Why do you have to bring her back? Yeah, I don't He's know. He's got to feel like know. a douche. Yeah, I would think he feels like a And then her father, the whole movie. Yeah, that was weird. I'm an asshole popping up all over the place. Fucking that was strange. Theory. And I don't think they handled, I mean, at this point, and because of talking with Junior doing this show, it's changed my views on these movies sometimes. So I'm a little more open to accept interpretations of characters. Because Electro ain't fucking nothing like Electro is in the comic books. Nothing at all. He didn't all. have, like, the sad backstory No, no of... it's... it's I, I honestly... I don't really know offhand the background for Electro, but... Okay, he, he was struck by lightning. Wikipedia, baby. Gained the ability to control electricity after being struck by lightning. And then, you know, it's just a criminal. Nothing big, nothing crazy. There was no sad backstory. Oh. It's like, oh, fuck, I got struck by lightning. I can control electricity now. And, um, he never did get to have that cake on he was about to bump in the beginning of the movie. <laughs> it was like an American Pie moment. It was really yeah. creepy to me. That's what I pictured, dude. But the, the characters are way off. Rhino Rhino is like a dude in, in a rhino. Just a big, hulking dude like that's dressed like a rhino. He was Dressed like a rhino? Yeah, totally. Okay. Like, it's all skin. He's got, like, gray skin. Like, it's a gray costume and just his face is... Uncovered, and he has like he a He wasn't horn. like in a big metal thing? Hell no, dude. Hell no. What? Hell no. Okay. There you go. That's Rhino right there. Huh. Wikipedia again. Why do you think they did that? I don't know. Who knows why they do the things they do. Maybe they couldn't come up with like a feasible background for her. Maybe they just thought it was stupid. I don't... Can you... Who is Rhino? Because I don't understand why he's driving a truck in the beginning, and then he's like in a metal Rhino thing. Like, what? Did I miss something? Like, what the hell? Who is Rhino? He was like a Russian gangster that gets arrested for trying to steal... It looked like stuff from Oz. Oscorp, some kind of serum or something from Oscorp. And then, at the end of the movie, when Harry's in jail and he's talking to that mysterious person that, I'm not sure who it was, he's talking to that guy about assembling the team, and they talk about him, he's the first one to break out. So they break him out of prison and then they give him the rhino suit. Okay. So, I mean, they've chosen to consolidate all these villains of Spider-Man's coming from shit that was created by Oscorp, which is not really how it happened in comic books. It's a departure. It's a departure even from the Ultimate stuff. Although, I don't really remember Rhino in the Ultimate comic books, but Electro in the Ultimate comic books looks more like Jamie Foxx's Electro in this movie. Okay. Towards him when he had the black suit, his head's blue, you know, that's... Yeah, the Avatar blue, yeah. So it was more of a look to the Ultimates, even though he wasn't a black guy. 
But you know, I mean, people bitch about that all the time. Oh my god, this guy can't play this. Jamie Foxx, man, I, I couldn't complain at all, dude. You he know? wasn't black originally. He wasn't, uh, no. Okay. No, he was, he was a white guy. Okay. Um, Jamie Foxx did a fine job, you know. That's probably why I've given in to my hate on Ben Affleck, because I, I think, think he might be a good Batman. And his, after seeing the release of the, yeah. com- the costume, oh, i got to show you that later. He looks fucking, it looks awesome. awesome. He showed me that already. Oh, did I? It's sweet. I don't think that his role depended on his <coughs> race at all, so I don't see why. Yeah, no, it there. didn't really depend. Well, none of these guys' roles really depend on race too much. No, yeah. you're right. It didn't you know, take anything away from it. I thought it was a good movie. I liked it. I, I liked it, but I really feel like its strongest suits were, you know, I the, thought the, he's the, a the good personal Spider-Man. relationships. He's not bad. Uh, he's not bad. You know, there's, there's talk that... Uh, I read somewhere recently that he won't be Spider-Man anymore because Sony's going to lose Spider-Man because Sony's, like, not doing well financially, and they're talking about getting out of the movie business oh. and just focusing back on their electronics. Oh. If that happens, you know, Spider-Man could go back to, to Marvel, and then we could see him playing with Iron Man and Captain America, which could be interesting. Yeah, what was with the, the random trailer, I feel like, after... The, the trailer. Movie. I'm glad you brought that up. The random trailer at the end. Not even a trailer, it's a, a credit scene. Yeah, I thought that was bogus. And, uh, it was like, give us some more Spider-Man. You yeah, know what I, mean? I, I think mm-hmm. it was... I read somewhere that for some reason Sony owed something to uh, some kind of bullshit background deal that they had to promote the X Men movie at the end of Spider Man, and that's how they chose to do it, which is really kind of lame and stupid. It was so not worth listening to that R and B song at the end there. Yeah, no, it was. It was. It was not at all. We need some Nickelback. Unlike the bonus scenes for Captain America: Winter Soldier, which were excellent. Yeah, that was a, a great movie. Yeah, but this one, you know, for what it was, you laughed it was all right. at a few moments. I did. You know, that's why I really thought I was going to come here and it was going to be seething hatred for me for this movie. Yeah, And I did. really came out kind of 50-50 on it. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. We liked it. What? You liked it. It was alright. It was alright. Surprising. I know you liked it, didn't you? You liked it. I didn't. I liked it. Um, it was a little long. It was a little long. It was a little long. And then they mashed the action a little bit too much together, too, I felt. I, I The electro and green goblin thing was kind of weird and just happened too quickly for me, but it is what it is, right? Yeah, I'm kind of pissed off about it, actually. I liked it, but it pissed me off at the end. I really felt like they shouldn't have killed... I guess it happened in the books, but I feel like they shouldn't have killed her off, because... Um, yeah, well, you know, she's dead. She yeah. could come back and play Mary Jane, though. They, they told me they could make her look different, give her some red hair. I think it That's was. stupid. Yeah, it is stupid. <laughs> Oddly enough, I'll be interested to see what they do with the Sinister Six. Is there going to be a third? Uh, there is a third. I actually believe that they signed for a fourth. Oh. But they have signed to make four of these, so... Wow. So two more Spider-Man movies to go, as far as we know. Maybe some extras. I don't know. It depends. This movie kept me hooked throughout it. Like, I was really curious to see what's going to happen with Jamie Foxx, what's going to happen with Harry, and, you know, it, it kept me hooked throughout it. It kept so me, yeah, same it, here. It did, I, like, a, after about an hour and a half through, I was like, how much, like, how much longer is this movie? Because... If you're a comic book fan and you leave all your comic book knowledge at the door and just take it for what it is, that they're creating their own thing, that they're doing their own thing, it's not a bad movie. But if you're, like, a super critical comic book fanboy, you're going to hate it. As a fan that doesn't know anything, Melissa... I liked it. And you would go see the next one. Yeah, I would go see the next one. Well, you know... Well, it sucks, though, because she's not going to be in it. And I liked them together. Although I feel like he should have let her just go. But I'm just saying. (laughs) Well, there you go. Not uh, kind of a middle-of-the-road movie. Not horrible. Let me just say... It, it did piss me off that she was, like, about... She was in the cab, like, about to go. And I'm like, oh, well, that's... You know, she'll be safe because this big fight's about to go down and, she, you know, she's on her way out. And I was like, oh, how convenient. And then they kill her. Should have been like, oh, how convenient. <laughs> What's going to go wrong here? Oh, yeah. It's true. But no, not as terrible it's as skeptical. I thought. And we'll be doing this again. Well. So anyway, that's uh, issue 39, the Spin Array, our Amazing Spider-Man 2 review. As always, I'm your host, Big B. Thank you, Melissa Lynn. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. Finally got to watch a movie together. Score for <laughs> us. <laughs> Parents yeah. of a one-year-old, we got to watch a movie together. And do a review yeah. about it. That's great, right? Beautiful. That's excellent stuff. It's good time. Good time. As always, uh, check out everything we do at comicsremix.com. Spinnerx on iTunes. Spinnerx.podbean.com. Oh, See you next week. See ya. Peace. Yeah.